how are you helping the business owner understand that you're not going to solve their, they're going to hand you a check, they're going to give you money, but you're not going to solve their problem immediately. That's always a balance, right? They want to, sometimes they believe that they need to have immediate value. And so to address that, what the client thinks that we're going to be doing or what they think that they need us to do for them right away is often different than what they actually need. And so some of that immediate value is sometimes they just need someone that they can trust, someone that can understand their problems and they can confide in. And that's a really important thing. And so taking that off their mind, re-clarifying it for them usually is a huge relief as it is. Even though I don't have a solution for it, at least that I've identified it, I've reframed it in a clearer way what the actual problem is, that's, a, that's an immediate win. And usually that helps relieve them. Okay, I got somebody that understands what I'm going through. And so- yeah, like how are you building that? Are you using what parts of the value builder system or how, what tools are you using in order to build out that trust to gain that confidence so that you can almost repeat it back to them? And this is very preliminary. So this is before, before I used to start with the value builder assessment right away, yeah. but I felt like that was getting them to open the kimono up a little too soon. They were, they, they was, there's some questions in there that talk about profit that maybe expose some things that they're not comfortable showing or, or sharing right mm -hmm. away. It's more about a question of just hearing them out. What are their challenges? What, where do you think they're coming from? So it's really just an open-ended conversation first, but then from there, we start talking about, okay, how can I help them understand that it's the structure of their business, or perhaps it's the management culture that they've implemented early that is actually causing those issues. So the owner's trap, I think is just so, I, I love that John, I don't know if he coined that term or where he got it from, but it is just beautiful. Like the owner's trap. Just when I say that people are like, what do you mean? Because often when my clients approach me and so I'm actually a systems guy, at the end of the day, I build systems and I integrate them and I get employees to love them and use them. That's what I do. But when I started my practice, I thought, I think every business owner just wants to grow. So I call my practice growth strategy. And ironically, when I sit down with a prospect or a new client, the first thing they say to me is, okay, we don't need to grow. <laughs> and that's like the perfect sign. Like, okay, of course, because you're in the owner's trap. And what does that mean? The, that means the more business you get, the more sucked in you're going to be. And we have a remedy for that. What's the antidote to that? And so we need to talk about the structure. And usually they're thinking, that's nice. Maybe I saw some of those podcasts that John does, those big companies and some success stories, but my business in my market is very different. And that's what I usually hear. Yeah, that's nice, but I don't think we can do that in our industry. And I've yet to be proven wrong. And it's, it's, a lot of these things are just principles. And so it's just, okay, let's just go through that process. And so that structure, that framework is the value builder system, but I don't introduce it right away. If that makes sense. It, it totally does. Like you're not just in your face saying value builder system. What you're saying is, okay, here's the like slice of what you bring to the table, a big slice of you, because that's ultimately what they're buying into. Like they're buying into you.